Breaker TV. Hey gamers, what's up? It's Ed Park, aka Togrim. I want to talk to you today about the design for most MMOs. They use a concept that I call vertical scaling, which I think has a lot of inherent limitations and creates problems in gameplay. And I want to propose a radically different alternative that I'm calling horizontal scaling. So, what is vertical scaling? In most major games such as World of Warcraft, Star Wars The Old Republic, Rift, etc., you start off with a level 1 character, you level them to it level cap and then from there there's a new level, uh, new type of vertical scaling where you start picking up tiers of gear right that's how most games are designed it's what most gamers are accustomed to it's just the way things are but I think the system is fundamentally flawed and it introduces a lot of problems one it's grindy as heck you have to grind your way to level cap and then from there you have to grind through whatever lower level tiers there are until you can catch up to where you want to be and experience the end game content and when new content re is released, you have to go through and regrind the new stuff. Um, and you have to do it to be competitive, not just because it's there, it's something new experience, but if you don't do it, then you'll fall behind what everyone else is able to do. Um, you know, the mage standing next to you has got better gear, their fireball is going to hit harder than yours, and there's no way for you to fix it until you go and grind out the same stuff too. That brings us to the second point. A vertical scaling system inherently creates brackets. You can't experience content together unless your level and your at end game, your gear tier, is sufficiently close with your guildies that it makes sense for you to be running together. Or you can run together and it's helpful for some people but face roll easy for others. Like if you totally out gear a certain content or instance and you're running with a friend, you'll be able to one or two shot things or it's trivial. Um, it doesn't really create a very challenging dynamic experience. So again, the bracketing system is a very big issue. Um, and this became very apparent when we were playing Star Wars Old Republic where there's a PvP bracket that stretches from level 10 to 49 and it turns out it's awesome. There's a bolster mechanic. It's not perfect. right? It doesn't create full parity but it does provide competitive capability. And the fun thing about this is anyone once they ding level 10 can start running with their guildies who have characters between level you know, 10 and 49 and it's a heck of a lot of fun. But with most games you can't. You don't have that especially with PvE because you can only meaningfully experience PvE with people around your same level or gear score. A third problem with the vertical scaling system is that content is initially too difficult, too hard until people get the gear and then once they get the gear then you have the opposite problem. The content is now too easy. It's face roll easy. It's not as challenging. It's not as dynamic anymore. And the vertical scaling inherently creates a concept called power creep where as characters get more stats wise stronger with their tiered gear um, it becomes difficult to balance the game because everything becomes too easy. A fourth problem with vertical scaling is you end up with a lot of dead zones in content. Um, initially when content is released, people will go through and they'll play it because that's where you get your gear because it's a vertical scaling system. But once a new expansion is released, the level cap is raised, the existing content from the last X pack and the X packs before it become less and less relevant because you have fewer people, you know, people only go through those zones once through the leveling process for a given character. And generally speaking, they don't go back. And what ends up happening is you have the population curve, you have a ton of people at the highest you know, uh, level cap who are do, doing things that's relevant for that point in time, but people through the leveling experience, it becomes more and more of a ghost town because you have a you know, larger number of zone and instances and levels to cross and you're simply not going to see as many people. So let's talk about something very different, what I'm calling uh, horizontal scaling and instead of having the game designed around a vertical progression what it is instead is about a horizontal progression where you broaden your capabilities so for example um, every new character that's rolled is given a baseline set of abilities so you know if I'm a mage I get single target damage I get some AOE damage I get some defensive cooldowns I get some crowd control and every mage who rolls you know level one has the same spell book as me same abilities and what happens is you gain more experience you broaden your skill, uh, your spell book. So maybe initially I start off with some limited mix of like fire, frost, and earth spells, and then over time I can gain more and more spells to give me different capabilities, different types of a re effects, different types of crowd control, etc. But inherently, a brand new mage with their fireball will do the same damage as a more experienced mage with a bigger spell book. Um, so they can both do content. The guy with the bigger spell book will have more options as far as customization but at the end of the day their fireball still hits the same, their ice land still hits the same, their sheep mechanic still works the same, etc. And if you do this, um, what this will allow, there's a number of different benefits. So 
One is that there are no artificial brackets due to level or gear score, right? You can do things with your friends immediately. And if you have a you know brand new tank character or brand new DPS, you may not have the full set of abilities or spell book that a more experienced player will have, but you'll have the baseline set that you need to function and to do things with that. So you roll a character, you can immediately start playing with your friends. Um, a second benefit is this levels the playing field with respect to PvP and PvE. It's not about the gear score. It becomes more so about your ability to play your character well and to adapt to situations and synergize with your teammates as opposed to, well, I just don't have enough DPS to contribute before the boss enrages, right, because I don't have the gear. A third benefit of the horizontal scaling system is that content stays evergreen. It's relevant. So, you know, you don't end up with an issue of dead zones because anyone can run the same content over and over to farm or get or earn whatever achievements or things they're trying to do and it'll still stay relevant because you don't outgear it because there's no concept of gear. Um, granted, you can get, you know, broaden out your spell books so you have more abilities. You can figure out how best to tackle that instance from an optimization standpoint, but the instance is still relevant. Now, I know what the, the obvious question sitting in the back of all, all your heads is, well, how do you implement progression for a horizontal scaling system? You know, obviously I've talked about for classes, you can have them broaden out their spell books so they have more abilities that they can choose from to use, right? That's one way you can do it. There are a few ways you can progress that aren't based around your gear score. So, you know, for example, let's look at real life with sports. Uh, if you're a runner, you run obviously for health reasons, but also you run because you're constantly looking at and trying to improve your time. So you're working on your, your PRs, your personal best for your mile time, for your 10K, for your marathon, whatever type of running you do. And it's the same way for people who golf. People who golf are constantly trying to, you know, break the barrier of 90 strokes for a game or break the magical 80 barriers so they can get into the 70s and have a single digit, you know, handicap. It's all about performance. And people are both enjoy the numerical aspect of trying to improve their gameplay as well as to being able to share this with friends. And we know this because the social media is wildly popular and people want to share everything that they're achieving, right? So if we look at this from a game perspective, you know, we know back in 2008, Mythic innovated achievements, the system with Warhammer, and that was rapidly adopted and expanded upon by Blizzard and World of Warcraft. And achievements became a huge part of the World of Warcraft game. It was a benchmark to say, I've done these things, I've achieved these things, anyone can see, I can prove it to you, right? So I've done these things in the arena, I've done these things in PvP, I've done these things as far as these... Uh, raid bosses or raid instances on different difficulties. I've crafted these things, I've done all these things, I've explored these things, whatever, right? And the achievement system is really, really popular. But I think it can be expanded upon much more effectively than it has been. So if we were to take the personal best concept from a golfer or a runner, what happens if we were to do that for games too? So it's not just about clearing the instance for the first time, right? Um, it's how fast did you kill this boss? What's your personal best on this boss fight? Is it five minutes this week? Did you manage to crack the five minute barrier and do it in four minutes and 55 seconds, et cetera, where you have those personal best? And even more so, what happens if we were to take these personal best or these records or these scoreboards, or these achievements and make it comparatively visible? So for example, in Warhammer, they had a kill board where I could see as a sword master you know, where I ranked in the top 10 of players killed you know, with a swordmaster, and it was really fun to be able to like kind of say, "Hey, I'm a top 10 killer of my class on this server." You know, but what happens if we were to expand this? You know, like I said, the the concept of achievements, so you could compare not just between your character, your guilds, uh, you know, same faction, same server, cross server, cross geographies, and say, "Hey, for this week, which guild down the final boss in this instance the fastest?" Right? Um, for the last 10 weeks, which guild is most consistently down bosses the fastest? And I think this would create a much more interesting competitive dynamic. Like right now with the existing achievement system, it's all about world first. First time to do it for the game, for a server, for a faction, whatever. But that's such a limiting way to look at it. So world first are only done once by definition in any given context. But what happens after this, after everyone gets this boss strategies down, they're communicated, who can do it the best now? Everyone knows how to do this boss fight. For this week, who did it this bad, the best? For the X number of weeks, who's done it the best? And you can say, hey, my guild, we did get the world first or we didn't, but hey, for the last four weeks running, we have done the boss fight, executed faster, had the fewest deaths, whatever measurable way, um, compared to any guild in the world. So we would argue that our guild, even though we didn't do it the first, we are now the masters of that boss fight, right? So there, that's one way of having progression, even in a horizontal-based system. Another way is cosmetic. So instead of getting gear to make your character hit harder, you get gear because you want to customize the way that it looks and the way that you get different gear could be 
based on things like you know the achievement system or it could be based on you know reputation or you know getting certain drops or like, like I said for the achievements it could be because we cleared these instances we're a consistent top five guild in PVE or we're a consistent top five guild in PVP um, which allows us to customize or get access to gear that people don't have and uh, on top of the cosmetic thing I think it'd be great is as your guild or individual achievements increase you can customize look at your character you can get guild heraldry and you know, change the emblem of your guild. And I know some of you are thinking, well, that creates problems because then you'll get Nazi symbols and stuff. And this is what I would say. I think for a game developer, it would be much easier for them to monitor guild heraldry icons and constantly having to build out entirely new content because all the content from the previous expansion is now dead. On top of the cosmetic aspect of gear, what you could do is offer different items in the game which will enhance certain capabilities. So, for example, you could have a Cinderburn staff which will beef up a mage's uh, damage over time capability but there is no concept of having a tier 1 or tier 2 or tier 3 cinder burn staff and if you want to play more of a defensive uh, mage where you have really strong kind of earth shielding spells your ability to set up obstructions for your opponents maybe what you get is an earth mind staff which will you know increase the size or area effect of your spells or increase their potency uh, but again, there's no concept of having a plus one or plus two or tier one, tier two Earthbind staff. It is what it is. And so uh, the game becomes a lot around collecting a broad set of weapons that enhance different capabilities. Uh, but there's no concept of having, once you've gotten your staff or your particular flaming sword or your, you know, armor reaving axe, that you don't have to go back and regrind it again. You've already earned it and you can choose to use it when the situation makes sense or if it suits your particular play style. So let me know what you think of my ideas around vertical versus horizontal scaling. Like I said, I think that this makes no sense. It's what people are used to, but it's inherently limiting and creates a lame experience and it creates uh, issues for the developer from a balance and concentration standpoint versus I think a horizontal system with achievements and things that aren't based on potential power creep or gear offer both a much more rewarding fun experience as well as one which is evergreen and is not grindy. Let me know what you think of my ideas by posting comments in this video. Take care.